Because April is IBS Awareness Month, so Irritable Bowel Awareness Month, and for those that struggle with IBS, you may be familiar with, you know, issues of bloating, diarrhea, constipation. So today, I wanted to cover a little bit about constipation. So first of all, with constipation, there are a, a few different types of constipation. I am going to cover one more specifically, which is um, obstructive uh, defecatory syndrome. <clears throat> um, which is a uh, type of functional constipation. But there are a couple other types of constipation. The first is um, something called slow transit constipation, uh, where the uh, contents within your colon tends to sort of move through the gut um, in a very, very slow manner. Um, and the slower things move through the gut, obviously the more um, dehydrated that potential stool is it becomes um, and when it enters the rectum it gets really really hard and, and really uh, much more difficult to, to empty um, <clears throat> this is where a lot of people may struggle with some straining um, and hard stool which can cause pain in the rectal or pelvic area as well as uh, you know issues potentially with hemorrhoids and fissures that sort of thing Okay, so that's slow transit constipation, but we also have normal con um, transit constipation uh, where, you know, everything's working properly. Um, the movement through the gut is pretty typical. However, um, expelling uh, stool can be really hard. Um, so really making changes, simple changes to diet, uh, such as increasing water, uh, your hydration, as well as your overall fiber intake, that can help make things a little bit <clears throat> softer as it passes through uh, the colon and the gut and uh, much easier to expel. Okay, so that is just normal transit constipation. And then the one I really want to uh, focus on today is uh, known as obstructive defecatory syndrome or ODS. So there are different reasons uh, for uh, obstruction when trying to evacuate stool, uh, but two common ones that um, are related to the pelvic floor and uh, pelvic health generally um, are first of all uh, a presence of a prolapse. So prolapse is <clears throat> a descent of um, some of the structures within the pelvic cavity. Um, and one part of the, um, the organ within the pelvic cavity that can be obstructive is the rectum itself. Uh, the rectum can become um, a little bit more stretched or lax. Uh, this can create a little bit of pocketing of stool in the rectum um, and, and that can make it really difficult to empty because if we have a pocket of stool and this is the pocket here and this is the rectum here as it's coming down if the stool is getting stuck in this pocket it's not being completely evacuated and so we get this sort of obstruction of um, stool in the pocket and that can also sometimes present for some people um, as having to go to the washroom a couple times to empty their bowels because they'll empty part of it the first time the rest will get stuck in the pocket and then they'll have to go a second time to empty the rest Okay, so that's where a prolapse within the rectal wall, which is also known as a rectocele, can also uh, become an obstruction to being able to empty the bowels. <clears throat> and of course, for some individuals, that can feel really uncomfortable as well, like feeling like there's a golf ball stuck in the area. Um, that can be uh, the sensation that some people will uh, report, but they can also report uh, symptoms of heaviness or more pressure in the area. Um, something that's stuck in the rectum, such as like a, a stool in a rectocele or just backed up stool, can also influence how the bladder is functioning. And, uh, in, in other words, because of the increased pressure in the, uh, from the rectum, some people will uh, report more urgency or frequency of urination because it's creating more pressure onto the bladder, which is in front of the rectum. Um, but also some individuals will also experience more uh, incontinence of uh, urine because of that pressure on the bladder. Okay, so that's one uh, cause of obstruction. 
which uh, is uh, facilitating this obstructive defecatory constipation. The other one is the lack of coordination in our pelvic floor muscles. And you know, I talk a lot about the pelvic floor. Um, so that's the other thing. So some people will have stool come into their rectum and then the sphincter at the bottom uh, where our anus is should essentially relax in order for the stool to be evacuated. Um, and of course that sphincter muscle is part of the pelvic floor unit. So when there is the inability to coordinate that sphincter muscle to open as um, an individual tries to push stool out, um, that can cause an obstruction for that evacuation. So normally what should happen is stool comes into the rectum, the sphincter at the bottom, you feel the urge to, to poop, the sphincter at the bottom relaxes, and then you're able to evacuate that stool. When there's a obstructive um, defecatory obstruction as a result of a lack of coordination in the sphincter, the stool will come into the rectum, the rectum doesn't relax, it stays tight, that individual may strain and push because they feel like they can't get it out, but essentially they're just continuing to push up against a wall because that muscle is not able to let go. Um, as a result, that causes a backup and that causes a lot of discomfort, the feeling of bloating, the feeling of um, like pressure and, and nausea and abdominal discomfort. Um, all of those can be a result of what we call this obstructive defecatory syndrome. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Um, let me know if you have any uh, questions, just put them in the comments below. But what you can do if you're, you're suspecting maybe you have this obstructive defecatory issue, you can always check in with your um, family doctor, uh, a, a great person to uh, see as far as you know individuals that specialize in this would be a gastrointestinal specialist or a GI doctor. Um, and the other option too is seeing a pelvic physiotherapist. Uh, a pelvic physiotherapist like myself has the training to be able to help people re-coordinate the muscles um, in and around the anorectal region in order for individuals to sort of get that coordination back so that they can empty their bowels more completely. Um, yeah, and we can also help with issues around rectoceles.